so you have an old gaming desktop. We'll say it was sitting in your attic or given to you. Most people don't pay for old desktops either way. We'll say it's as old as mine. Mine is eight years old. I know. It's a fucking eternity. If we also assume you haven't been living under a rock the past few years, you've probably seen people turn older desktops or maybe even the desktop that you have into a competent gaming rig. But if you clicked on this video, I'm assuming you don't know where to start. So today we'll be talking about the four horsemen of old desktop upgrades. Most of the desktops I'll be talking about today come from like HP or Dell or Acer and they have like, you know, four core i5s or i7s in them, usually paired with eight to 16 gigs of RAM. They're decent Chrome machines, but they can't do any type of gaming. So let's begin by going over the four items we'll be talking about today. I'm torturing myself by saying this. I'll put all the parts that I talk about in this video down in the description. I. The four parts we'll be talking about today are your power supply, a 24 pin adapter, I don't know where mine went. You only need a 24 pin adapter if your motherboard or your power supply is proprietary. Uh, proprietary boys, your timestamp is there. New or more RAM and your graphics card. The main issue with desktops and upgrading them specifically is the fact that most of the time they just don't have enough power. And I'm not talking about like horsepower, like a graphics card and a GPU. I'm talking about your power supply. Most people will immediately want to upgrade to something like an RX 580 or a, a 1660 or a, a fucking RTX. The issue with this is that most of these desktops come with proprietary or low end power supplies that provide anywhere between 150 and 350 watts. This simply is not enough. Now, for the people who don't want to fuck with their power supplies, there's an easy solution out there. I'll go over it real quick just to get out of the fucking way. It's called the MSI GTX 1650 Low Profile. All modern GPUs require external power directly from the power supply. This is not something you can do with proprietary power supplies, but if you have a proprietary power supply that has 240, 250 watts in it, you can throw a GTX 1650 Low Profile in there, providing the rest of your system doesn't suck up an insane amount of energy and you can get a decent amount of horsepower out of it. And at maximum load, this graphics card only pulls about 75 watts, so it's actually pretty damn power efficient. The, the price on it is a little... But you are paying for a one-of-a-kind type of graphics card. I mean, a 1650, pretty powerful, and somehow making it low profile and still work? Weird to me, but I'm glad MSI did it. If you are, however, willing to tinker with your power supply a little bit, maybe put some money and some time into it, a little bit of research, you can get much better results out of your system. Older desktops use components that don't require all that much energy. Usually they use, like, like I said, four cores, older four core CPUs. They use DDR3, which is really power inefficient, but they also use older chipsets as well. Even though these systems are power efficient in some categories and not in others, a 500 watt probably do you just fine. Take my PC, for example. I have an i7-3770, 12 gigabytes of RAM, and a Quadro K2200. If you add another four gigs of RAM, and you throw an RTX 2060 in here, this system wouldn't even pull 400 watts under maximum load. And that's with an RTX 2060, yeah. A power efficient card, I know, I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot there. Now that the power supply is out of the way and we've talked about it, let's talk about you proprietary boys out there. If you're not interested, you could skip this or whatever. I am a part of the proprietary gang myself, and I, I know the fucking struggle. I do have something quite interesting for you though. proprietary adapters. So some older desktops have proprietary motherboards and power supplies. This means they don't have 24 pin connectors for regular power supplies. Take my HP desktop for example. Most HP desktops have a proprietary six pin connector. And as you guys can see, I have this connector, but on the other end of it, you got a 24 pin for a regular power supply. And this is just a $10 adapter. This is for HP desktops though. If you have a Dell or an Acer or even any different type of variation of HP desktop, you're going to have to do your own research into what adapter you may need. Your only real issue you might have, and I'm actually probably going to have it with this system when I try to upgrade my power supply, sometimes you may need to rearrange the pins and this connector right here. Uh, that's not too difficult, you have to be careful though. Like I've been saying throughout this entire video, this shit takes work, it takes money, it takes time, it takes patience. But at the end of it, it's, it's so worth it dude. Alright, proprietary boys, we're done. Let's talk quickly about RAM. RAM's not something I'm going to go over too much. RAM is a, a case by case basis. My system originally had like, I don't know, 
six gigs of RAM? I don't, I don't remember. Most systems will have a smaller amount of RAM, four, six, or eight gigs. You'll want 16 gigs if you want to do gaming, and you'll especially want 16 gigs if you want to do any type of gaming or content creation. But RAM is case by case. If you need some, I'll leave some shit in the description. Now that you have a sufficient amount of power to power your system, you have RAM, you're all ready to go. All you need is a graphics card. This is going to be the longest segment of the video. I'm going to lay out a rubric on screen when I'm talking about these budgets so people can actually have a, a visual idea of, of what they're going to be looking for. So let's start on the low end and work our way up to the RTX end of the spectrum. For people looking to spend $100 or somewhere in that range, you can very easily find yourself an RX 574GB or a GTX 974GB. Now, both of these cards are VR-ready GPUs. They're actually pretty beefy, even though they're on the cheaper end. But when it comes to VR, I don't think you're gonna... I don't... No, I don't think that's actually gonna be a good idea, especially if you're gonna be in an old system like this. If you wanna actually do VR, get an 8 gigabyte modern GPU, like a 580, which we'll be talking about here in a minute. Not saying the 570 isn't modern, just saying it's not... Going any lower than $100, once you get to the, the 70 80 $90 range, you start to enter the 1050 Ti and the 750 Ti territory, which, no. Those graphics cards only pull like 75 watts from the system anyways. You wouldn't even really need a power supply upgrade. I could throw a 1050 Ti in here right now and I'd be perfectly fine. In fact, it'd probably perform worse than this fucking Quadro that I have. I'm just kidding, 1050 Ti is way better. Still, doesn't matter. They're dog shit cards, they're low end cards. Don't get them. In the $150 to $180 range, we have on Team Red the RX 588 GB, and on Team Green we have the 1650 Super. You could also go for something like a GTX 1066 GB, but I don't really see the point in that, honestly. Uh, the GTX 16 series exists. The RX 580 and the GTX 1650 Super are both phenomenal mid range cards capable of high FPS 1080p gaming and lower FPS high quality 1440p gaming. Providing the rest of your system can actually keep up with the graphics card, which is something that's personal, case by case basis, you have fun figuring that one out. Both GPUs, again, are good for VR gaming, and two years from now, three years from now, the RX 580 and the 1650 Super will probably be good enough for higher end games on low FPS and low end games at decent FPS. They're not future proof cards by any means, but they are cards that are good for the time. Coming in at the 200 to $250 range, we have a total of three GPUs, starting on Team Red because, uh, red, you know. We have the Vega 56 8 gigabyte, a 1440p oriented graphics card, and Yes, it's, its price definitely reflects this, but this GPU is more akin to like a, a GTX 1080, although you can find these on eBay all day for $250. The Vega 56 and the Vega 64 are basically the definition of mid-tier to high-tier GPUs, but like in, the in-between. What are we going to call this? Upper middle class. On the team green side of things, for $200 to $250, you have the GTX 1660 and the 1660 Super. No, I will not be even touching the 1660 Ti because the 1660 Ti and the 1660 Super are one and the same. I'm not even going to go over the 1660 that much, you, you guys know what I'm going to say. $200, great bang for your buck for $200. Some people are probably going to ask, why didn't you put the 5500 XT in this category? Because the RX 580, the RX 590, and the 5500 XT are the exact same goddamn graphics card. But if you give the uh, the 1660 one of those mushrooms from Mario, you get the 1660 Super. The Super is 220 to 230 dollars on eBay with a base clock of 1500 megahertz, six gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM, and 1400 of them CUDA cores. To anyone looking for the upper echelon of mid-range. The Super's got, it's got you covered. Finally, we're gonna jump from the 250 to the $300 range. Oh God. So I made a PC buyer's guide not too long ago. I actually haven't been able to export it because my graphics card doesn't have enough power to. But the weirdest thing about all this is I, ha I have the exact same issue in this video that I did in that one. It's that after $300, the only words on the script are RTX. $300, RTX 2060. 
four hundred dollars twenty sixty super five hundred dollars twenty seventy super you guys get the fucking gist i genuinely don't even think i need to go any deeper into this category that's it keep in mind any graphics card upgrade or any upgrade period it's going to take an extensive amount of research and you're gonna to need to put a lot of time and money into it. You're also going to need to be able to assess the capabilities of your system right now before you embark on any of these, these, these upgrades. I always ask people to do research because they'll, they'll comment on my videos or message me on Instagram or Twitter saying, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a GTX 1070 Ti good? It, yeah, it is. But if you pair it with an i2 Duo, it's not good all of a sudden. Do you see what I'm saying? I need to know the rest of the system. If you guys have any questions, comments, whatever the hell, leave them down below. Speaking of down below, there's links to all the parts down below and my Patreon. If you'd like to become the first patron, it's linked down below. There's a $3 tier and a $5 tier. I did actually have a patron for a second. It was a nice second. But I think that's going to do it for this video. If you did go on to enjoy this video, please be sure to drop it a like and subscribe if you're new. We're on our way to 10,000 this year. I love you all so much, and I'll see you in the next one.